Good afternoon. If you're watching, please comment so I know who's here. I'm happy to have you on this Friday afternoon. I've got a wonderful fun fold project to show you. Um, before we start, a friendly reminder, we are down to the last three days of celebration. Today, tomorrow, and Sunday. Sunday, February 28th is the very last day to um, get free products with your purchases of uh, $50 or more. And you can also earn an exclusive host stamp set when your order or a group of orders that you take in reach $300 and that's the punch party stamp set exclusive for orders of $300 or more or if you want to get a group of friends and family together and order with you um, when those total orders reach 300 you can earn that as well and then we also finally have in addition to our rewards for shopping and hosting there is also a reward for joining my Mary Stampers team. You will get five packs of six by six designer series paper in our different color families. And that value alone is $57.50. So when you add that to the $125 of Stampin' Up! product, you can choose and pay just $99 plus tax and have it shipped to you free, you're um, paying basically, let's see, um, you'd be getting about $180 in product and you'd be paying just $99 plus tax free shipping on that starter kit. So a great, great deal. In addition to getting those free packs of designer series paper when you join my Mary Stampers team. You also would be a part of our private Facebook group. We have creative challenges twice a month. We do lots of sharing. We are very much about, a care, about caring and sharing and cheering each other on. <clears throat> and um, whatever it is we want, all want to get from our Stampin' Up! demonstrator experience. Um, in addition to being a part of my team, uh, team members do receive free PDF tutorials that I use in my classes to go. Um, so my team members do not have to pay for those PDF tutorials. So that's an extra little perk on top of um, the many other things we do as a team and the many perks that Stampin' Up! gives us the opportunity to, to earn. So, last three days of celebration, act now. Celebration ends at midnight mountain time on February 28th. I highly suggest you not wait until the last hours of celebration. After all, it is a Sunday, a weekend, and demonstrator support um, and IT is very limited if we would have any problems with last minute orders or last minute um, uh, purchases of starter kits. So I will be available pretty much all weekend to assist you with any of your um, last minute celebration needs over these last few days. Um, yesterday, and in fact, over the last few weeks, I've received a good number of pieces of happy mail and I should have brought them all down. Um, I usually keep them upstairs on either my mantle or my um, table in my foyer for a while and I just didn't bring them down today but I did bring two of them down. I received these yesterday. Um, this one came from, this fun full card came from my dear friend Joyce Whitman who played an integral start in me uh, really building a Stampin' Up! business many years ago. And um, she just remains a wonderful dear friend 
and I have turned her from a scrapbooker into a card maker. <laughs> So she sent me this card to use along with a really nice note thanking me for being her favorite Stampin' Up! teacher and that means so, so very much to me. And she also sent me yet again another face mask, this one with my favorite team, the Ohio State Buckeyes. So I'm grateful to Joyce for that surprise. And then yesterday I also received happy mail from um, a demonstrator friend, Sue Thomas. We have never met in person. Um, she also had a nice little note enclosed, but um, she sent me a piece of happy mail and we've just connected through Facebook groups that we both belong to. And um, she lives in uh, Northwestern Ohio. So I believe, I think, I think that's correct. Um, somewhere in Ohio, but hopefully Sue Thomas and I will get to meet in person someday and perhaps stamp together. But she sent me this card and I think it's so unique because it has a corner pocket and then it's got a, a small greeting card inside. And she featured the sand and sea suite in making this card. So I decided I would use this card today to um, showcase in my Funfold Friday Facebook Live. And I have decided I'm going to use the very same suite she did, the Sand and Sea. And um, I'm going to case this, but my card's going to turn out to be completely different, I'm sure. So let me flip my camera around and we will get started right away. So if um, I have shown a few projects using the Sand and Sea Suite, but if you have not, um, if you are not familiar with the Sand and Sea Suite, you can find it on pages 40, 41, and 42 of our January to June mini catalog. So let's get started right now. I'll quickly show you some of the products if you're not familiar with it already. There is gorgeous designer series paper. Here's one with the starfish and this watercolor on the back. It just just the paper alone is so gorgeous and you all know how much I love designer series paper and there's this one these fun little stripe polka dot stripes and I'm just pulling them out one by one here oh here's some gorgeous seashells and then I love this. I mean, I see this in both directions. Like this could be the sand and maybe the sun setting, sun rising, something like that. Or turn it and this could be your water on the bottom. And then we also have this one, which to me looks like jellyfish and some more watercolor on the back. I have actually used this sheet as both water and as sky. And let's see, I think I showed you that one. I feel like there's something I'm missing. There's, oops, no, I did show you that one, didn't I? Which is, what am I missing here? One, two, three, four, there's one more. Oh, here it is. Lots of colorful shells. And then on the reverse side is this. And to me, this just says sand. Um, of course, you can do lots of things with any of these papers, but those are the six papers with the 12 different designs on them. The suite comes with the seashells 3D embossing folder. If you go back to my blog, 
or my Stampin' Peace with Mary Nabe YouTube channel, you'll see uh, some gorgeous cards made with this embossing folder and the pearl essence paper. And then finally, here is the bundle. Friends are like seashells with the coordinating dies. So much fun to work with. And again, you'll see me using these in those um, blog posts and YouTube videos that I've been referring to regarding the seashells embossing folder. So let's get started. Okay, so really this fun fold card that Sue sent me is actually two parts. You've got the mini card, we'll do that second, and then you've got this card base. The card base itself does not open. So I'm going to start by choosing my background designer series paper and then the cardstock to put it on. And I think I am going to go with, where is it here? I'm afraid this might be too much, but I'm going for it anyways. So, I'm going to start by cutting my designer series paper down to, oops, yeah, that's correct. Four inches by, I'm gonna cut this end, I think. Four inches by five and a quarter. And I'm going to mount this on a piece of, I'm gonna put these where you can see these, so I'm gonna cover that little sign up for now. I'm going to mount that on a piece of the Seaside Spray cardstock. Let's see if I have a scrap that I can cut. I think I'll cut this one. So this piece you need to have four and a quarter by five and a half inches. If you cut it four and a quarter by five and a half inches, then your finished card for mailing will be the same size as your standard fold card. So now I have that much. Now I wanna make this corner pocket that Sue has right here. And I'm going to show you how I do this. Get my handy measuring tool here. And I'm going to measure from corner to corner. And it looks like, and she used white for this, she has three and a half and three and a half. So that tells me if these two sides are three and a half inches long, she basically cut a three and a half inch square on the diagonal. And I'm going to cut that with, I'm trying to decide what I want to use. I think I'm going to cut that from, ooh, that flirty flamingo's pretty. You know what? I think I'm going to cut it from the Seaside Spray. I think I'm going to keep it the same color as my base. So I'll cut this three and a half inches by three and a half inches. And then I'm going to cut this on the diagonal. So to do that, I'm going to place opposite corners right in that cutting groove. Okay, I want those right in the cutting groove. Now, one thing when you are cutting on a diagonal, if you start cutting at that tiny little corner, sometimes the blade will snag right there. So instead of starting at the top and pulling down like I normally do, when I'm cutting on the diagonal, I wanna make sure my corners are still in right inside that cutting groove, I'm going to start actually on the cardstock 
I'm going to score or uh, cut up and cut down. All right. And that way I'm not going to get any snagging on those corners. So you know what I'm thinking about this? You save it, you make another one because it's just as easy to make two cards as one, right? Should I just be making two at once right now? Um, I kind of think I should. Because if I do that, then I can keep one as my sample and one to use. And then I can also give one away at the end of this Facebook Live. So I'll cut this another piece of the DSP, four inches by five and a quarter. You've heard me say that before, right? It's just as easy to make two cards as it at once as it is one. Okay, so now I have this little corner piece ready. But notice on Sue's card, she decorated up her corner with some more designer series paper. So again, I'm going to measure the two equal sides of her right triangle. Does that take you back to uh, school days, the right triangle? And these sides measure three and a quarter inches. So I need to cut a square from designer series paper that measures three and a quarter inches. And okay, this is gonna be tricky for me to decide now what do I want to use? The dots would be pretty on there. Um, well, that's pretty too. Maybe I'll just go with the dots for now. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with those dots. So I said this needs, I need two squares that are, no, I need one square that's three and a quarter inches by three and a quarter inches. And then I'll cut this in half on the diagonal just like I did before. So I want opposite corners sitting right in that cutting groove. And then remember what I said, if you pull the uh, blade down on that tiny little corner, it might snag the corner. So I'm just going to start on my DSP and I'm going to cut up and then down. And I've got perfect lines cut now. Okay just like that. How about if we put this part of our card together before we go any further? And then we'll go on to making the mini card that sits inside of it. And if Sue's watching, I haven't even scrolled through to see who is on. I'll, I'll do that momentarily. Got something. But if Sue is watching, thank you so much for inspiring me with this new variation on the corner pocket card, because I love it. I've been finding a lot of neat um, card layouts and fun folds lately. Um, if you remember back to last Friday, we did that bottom fold card. Last night I worked on some variations of that that I will be showing oh either later today or perhaps probably most likely tomorrow but I just need to take the photographs and do the write-up for my Facebook and I'll get those posted so you can see the variation I did on that. But sometimes you get kind of hooked, you know, when you learn something, um, learn something new. Doesn't it just kind of hook you and you feel like you can't stop? You got to keep making more. Now, when you are um, adhering the larger of the triangles, remember this is a pocket. 
So you only want, um, you only want the two equal sides to be adhered down. That long side of the triangle you need to leave open because that's where we will insert our mini card. Oh, Sue, you are watching. Good, good, good. And on Monday, I will be casing um, the other fun fold card I received in yesterday's happy mail from uh, Joyce Wilhelm. Gosh, I hope I said her name right when I showed that card earlier. I have a friend, Joyce Whitman and Joyce Wilhelm. And I just spoke with, met with Joyce Whitman recently, and now I'm thinking, okay, did I say the right name? But it was Joyce Wilhelm who sent me the other one. Okay, so remember, long side open on that cardstock corner, because that is your pocket. Now you want to add the DSP triangle and this one you are going to adhere on all three sides. I almost chose a different suite today or I was thinking of cho choosing maybe one of our celebration papers since celebration does end on Sunday. But quite honestly, I thought I, I could use a pick-me-up this week. You know, think some warm thoughts. It's been kind of chilly lately, snowy, although this week was warmer in central Ohio. But I thought this way we can all dream of the beach and warmer days and more sunshine. So I stuck with the sand and sweet, sand and sea sweet. Um, just as Sue did with her card. Okay, so now I have the pocket portion of the card ready. So I'm going to set these aside. And now we'll focus on the mini card on the inside. Now, you saw me, this is my favorite measuring tool. You can find it in um, like the sewing section or quilting section of the big box stores or on Amazon, but that's where I found it in quilting um, and sewing section. However, if you have our marvelous Stampin' Up! paper trimmer, you can use your own trimmer to do the measuring as well. Um, I like this one because sometimes it's just easier to lay it on top of my project, um, especially something like this when I'm casing. But this is going to be real easy to um, measure. I can see it's eight inches, turn it by three inches. So now I need a piece eight inches by three inches. I think I am going to go with the... I was trying to decide between the flirty flamingo and the petal or a blushing bride. Anybody have a preference for this? We could do the yellow. We could skip the pinks and we could do so saffron also, but I'm leaning towards flirty flamingo or brushing bride. Anybody have a preference of one of those two? Thanks to all of you who are watching. Thanks to all of you who have shared this Facebook Live. I appreciate you in both ways. Okay, Joyce, letter B answered first. So we're going to go with her choice of Flirty Flamingo. And look at the next two people who responded agreed on that. Okay, here we go. Eight inches 
by three inches. Oh, that has a, I just, that's got a score line right down the center. I didn't even catch that. So let's start again. Three inches by eight inches. And then I want to score this at four inches on the long side. Just like that. So that's going to go right inside there. And I'm going to go ahead and cut my second one at the same time. Don't forget, if you would like to win this card, one of these two cards, um, be sure that you are commenting throughout the live because every time you comment and every time you share is how you get your name into the drawing for this card. Oh, what did I forget to do? Did anybody catch that? I didn't score it. So again, scoring the mini card at four inches on the long side. So why don't we decorate our front now? On the front, I think I want, let me find just the one. I think I would like this on the front. Yes, I think I'm going to do that. And this, I'm in luck, because this is six inches wide. So it will fit. So that's four by three on the front. So I'm going to cut this to three and three quarters by two and three quarters. And when I put this on my blog in the next few days or the next week, um, I'll be sure and have the dimensions typed out, but you can always just rewind, go back to the video at any time. The Facebook Lives are always saved to the group or the page that I do them on. So easy to find. Is anybody else glad it's Friday? It's been a long week, kind of a trying week too. I have to admit, I've been a little bit down in the dumps, but just, you know, each day I took a little more time for myself this week. Yesterday I went out and ran some errands and did some fun things. Um, after my Facebook Live tonight, I decided I'm going to Hobby Lobby and I'm going to find some things to make a new wreath for my front door. I figured that's a good pick me up. And then um, I also invited a friend for dinner. You know, eating by yourself so often gets pretty lonely. So um, there's a woman that lives very close here in Westerville um, that before the pandemic had met with me and we'd done some classes here. She came to those and um, we haven't seen each other in that long. And so I just texted her today, said I'm making tacos for my dinner. Um, are you interested in coming? And she said, sure. So um, we're gonna get together and just catch up and chat for a little bit. Alrighty, so this was Sue's mini card. I'm gonna set that aside. And now I have to decide what I wanna put on my mini card. And this set has great sentiments. Um, on her, she put, love you to the beach and back. Friends are like seashells. You collect them along the way. You are unique and completely amazing. And then there's other ones. Um, thank you for you. Happy birthday to my beautiful friend. I'm so happy I found you. Wishing you the very best. 
I decided that I, I too am going to use Love You to the Beach and Back. Um, and I'm going to send this card eventually to my daughter, Emily. And um, I think I can share this with you. She's usually not on my Facebook Live. She's my grad student at UC that's studying physical therapy. She sent me a picture earlier in the week and it just said uh, that she had a picture of her books and everything laid out that she was studying and there was a bottle of sunscreen and she said she just put the sunscreen on to um, enjoy the smell and pretend that she was at Hawaii <laughs> while she was studying. And I thought, oh, she's getting a little cabin fever and overwhelmed with her studies. So I thought this would be a fun thing to, to send to her. I'm kind of, that might be too busy. I was thinking I would, you know what? Let's do this. Let's stamp on here. I'm gonna see how Flirty Flamingo stamped on the Blushing Bride looks. Oh yeah, I like that. I'm gonna stamp a few of these actually. Because I will likely make some more cards. I feel like that I'm not getting enough ink on that top part of my stamp. So I'm going to flip it over and do it again. Best thing about our paper is it's two-sided, right? I think I need to re-ink my ink pad is what the deal is. There we go. And then I'm going to use my one inch circle punch. I like this one better. Do you ever do that, punch out more, uh, stamp more than you need and decide which you like best? to look to see which is the front and back. Here we go. So I'm going to pop these up on dimensionals. I also had um, some dance moms here the last two nights from a local dance studio and they were making um, those big trifold display boards for their graduating seniors. So I got to um, meet some very nice people this week and enjoyed helping them preserve some of their memories of their graduating senior dancers. All very, very nice people. It was a different kind of project, something different than my usual card classes and such. Now, normally when I um, line the inside of my cards, I typically use white, but I'm gonna step outside of my box here and we are going to, I want that just a little bit larger. We're going to um, line the inside of our Flirty Flamingo cards with Blushing Bride. Just a little something different, a little something unexpected. So the inside is two and three quarters by three and three quarters. And that's the same size as the designer series paper that we put on the front of the mini card.
Is anybody interested in earn, in uh, winning one of these cards? If you are, don't forget to comment. And if you would be so kind as to share this video either now or once it's complete, I would be very much appreciated. I would be very much appreciative. That didn't, you can tell I'm, it's Friday and I'm tired. My words aren't coming out right. How about that? Okay, now, I have used the opal rounds <clears throat> with some of my sand and sweet projects. You can even see that some of them I colored with the Seaside Spray Stampin' Blends marker. One embellishment, one product in the sand and sea suite that I have not used are these stickers. So there's a couple of different, and I don't know how well you can see this, but the stickers are printed on um, a shimmery paper, very much like the pearlescent paper that we have in the suite. So I think I'm just going to use some of these shells instead of stamping and die cutting the shells today. like that. You can arrange them and layer them any way you want. I do just like that. Again, I don't know how well you can tell that it's got that pearlescent look to it. So let me do the same thing on the other. for them to overlap each other like that. And then I think I'll also add one to the inside of each of the cards, mini cards. Uh, not really, that's a little too much pink for me in there. So I'm going to go to this Seaside Spray color. I don't know where I want it. I think I'll go in the same place I put the other one. And then of course, if we're, we've already got these out, why not add a few to the envelope? I pulled out two envelopes, but apparently I only pulled out one. Or I mixed it up in with all the paper and cardstock I have sitting to my left that you can't see. <laughs> that happens. I don't know if I like that. It's not enough. Well, it's stuck. So I'll leave it. And as long as we're embellishing this much, let's just add some of the opal rounds as well. And I think I'm going to use the plain ones that I have not colored on this card. Add a couple at the top here. And on these I'm adding to my mini card. So there's one. You 
you could even add them on the outside, on the base, if you'd like. So lots of fun things happening on this card. So tell me what you think. Tell me what you think. So there's, they're basically the same. I'll open this one up. And again, I want to give another shout out to Sue Thomas for the inspiration for today's Fun Fold Friday card with this beautiful card she sent to me and I wanted to case for today. She's even got a nice message inside and she added some um, baker's twine at the top as well. And by the way, does everybody know what the term case stands for, C-A-S-E? You see and hear of that a lot in the Stampin' Up! world. And to us, case means copy and share everything. So it's sort of like our way of saying, um, if you see a Stampin' Up! project out on the internet, out in cyber world, please feel free to copy it. You can copy it exactly, you can make it your own. If you're copying exactly and you're putting it out there to other people, um, we all appreciate if you uh, give credit to the person who you got the idea from. Um, sometimes we can find that information easily and sometimes not, but if you are able to give credit when you are copying somebody exactly, that's a wonderful thing. And the second part of case is share, share everything, that you should feel proud of your work and excited about your work and want to share it with other people as well. And what a great community we can build when we all work on uh, casing, copy and share everything. So thank you for spending part of your Friday afternoon with me. On, well, this weekend I'll be working on taxes. I hate to say it, but the last two years I was, you know, so last minute Lucy on my taxes. And I have promised myself that I will not do that this year. So tomorrow and um, is tomorrow and part of Sunday, I'm going to go have lunch with my Emily in Cincinnati on Sunday. Um, but all of tomorrow and part of Sunday will be devoted to working on my taxes. I know a bummer, but it's a necessary evil. And um, so I may or may not be posting some projects throughout the weekend. You will likely see a little bit of something from me on Facebook as Sunday is the last day of celebration and I throw out some reminders about that because I don't want anybody to miss out on the great deals. Monday, I usually do my Facebook Live at 11 a.m. However, I have a dentist appointment at 9, so that might be pushing it a little bit because I am having some dental work done. So Monday will be at 2 p.m., and I will put up a reminder out on Monday morning that Monday's Facebook Live is being pushed back to 2 p.m. So have a wonderful weekend. Um, do something good for yourself. And how about making a card and sending a card? I know a number of you have signed up with me to do that um, 40, send 40 cards on the 40 days of Lent. I'm a little bit on behind on mine, so I want to catch up on that this evening. Um, but if you are participating in that, thank you so much. If you're not, no worries. I hope you still will reach out to somebody with a handmade card. Have a great weekend. Thanks for um, being a viewer and a follower and supporter of Stampin' Peace with Mary Nabe. I do appreciate you. Bye-bye.